G'day and welcome to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be trying out a monopod for the very first time for wildlife photography. iFootage reached out to me and they said, hey Dwayne, would you be interested in trying out the Cobra 2 monopod? My first reaction was to politely decline because I don't use monopods. I use a tripod and a gimbal as you would have seen in my previous videos. However, I then thought, well, I've never used a monopod, so how can I have an opinion on it? So I thought, why not send it through? So they've sent it to me, it's arrived, and I want to head out into the field and just give it a go. I'm going to visit the bush, some bushland, and I'm going to visit a local lake and just put it through its paces. If you want to jump straight to my thoughts, check the video chapters below or in the description. But for now, let's head out in the field and give it a try. So I'm in the Warby National Park at the moment. Uh, there's a few birds about. Uh, I've got my big 500 mil, my R5 1.4. So it's a fairly heavy rig sitting on top of the monopod uh, and we'll just see how it goes. Uh, I'm just gonna be walking around. I'm not doing any setups. Okay, so I've just actually stumbled across a couple of turquoise parrots that are feeding in the grass. I can see a female, she's just in the grass over here and uh, I can only see her head, so I'll try and get a few shots of her head, see what they come up like. Oh, it's amazing, there she is. You can see her eye looking at us through the grass. I'm not sure what sort of shot it'll make, but it'll be interesting all the same. Oh, that was a good start. <laughs> Very cool. We've got a yellow tufted honey eater right here in front of us. So the yellow tufted honey eater is feeding on these native grevilleas. So it's just a matter of waiting to try and get, waiting for the bird to get itself isolated. Here we go. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> Just watching the, we're just watching the bird, waiting for it to hopefully get itself isolated on. It's feeding, going from flower to flower. There's one up the top right here, which would be amazing if it goes up there. So he's jumping around at the back and I can't see him. But, so it's no good getting a photo when he's right in the middle of these bushes. So we really want him here we go, he's on there, 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 we'll get it, oh. <laughs> oh. It's just about watching the subject, watching how they feed and trying to set yourself up so that you can get that bird isolated in some way. So because we're not doing setups, I'm heavily reliant on the bird waiting for the bird to land where I want it. I've just spotted an eastern yellow robin. He's up on the he's up on this tree here. So he's flying around up here. They perch and then they drop down. So what we might need to do is just track him and watch him and see. Oh, he's up. Hopefully he's going to land low. So we'll just keep an eye on him. He's up up the top of this tree. There he is, on this part. Oh, look at this, how good is this? He's naturally landed on this, <laughs> on this dead stick. There we go, at the top. Oh, 
I'm not sure if we got the eye contact I was after, but Oh, that's nice. Oh, he's on this. Oh, that's beautiful. He, they perch on the side of these trees. <laughs> he loves landing on the side of this uh, tree. It's got a dead branch coming up. And we can get them isolated on that dead um, branch. I'm just trying to think if I can position myself to a better spot. Because he lands on it. So I might just reposition myself. See if we can't get a different shot on that. Alright. So I'm walking around and I'm looking at this dead branch. And I'm going till I can get... A nice background right about here looks good okay okay yeah this is this is fantastic so you can see this is the um, dead branch that I'm talking about just looks nice so let's hope he comes back and lands on it Would you believe it that the <laughs> I went back to get the camera and the bird land <laughs> back on the perch. Oh, I have to wait now and hopefully it comes back. A waiting game now to <laughs> hopefully this uh, robin comes back. He hasn't come back yet. But I'm going to be patient. I'm just going to wait. Uh, if you see a bird land on a nice perch, there's a high chance it will return to that perch. So it's just a matter of often waiting and setting up. His anti kindness. I've never photographed one of these before. Oh my god, oh my god, this shot. Oh wow, well. oh my god. This little anti kindness is on the top of this. I just want to explain what just happened and it's one of the highlights of wildlife photography is that you are out in the bush, you're out in nature, you just don't know what's going to happen. And I'm here waiting for this eastern yellow robin which still hasn't turned up by the way and out of the corner of my eye I see movements. So I've had a look and I can see this little what looks like a rat scurrying around but I know it's not a rat and in Australia we have these little um, mammals called antichinus and I've never photographed them and in fact I've never really seen them uh, because they're not really my forte. However, it started scurrying up this uh, dead tree trunk and so I've moved my camera obviously and I've focused on it. It was a bit obstructed by a bit of um, eucalypt so you know I took a few shots and sure enough I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Anyway, I'm, I keep watching this little antichinus and then it scurries up to the top of this tree and it's perched on the very top of this um, dead branch. I've rattled off a few shots, I've got a tiny bit of video, and then off it went. And I've probably got, well I've never got, I haven't got a shot before, but the shot I got, I'm over the moon with. It's so cool, it's got all the detail, it's, you know, it just captures the essence of this little antichinus. And I never ever would have anticipated to get that shot today, so um, just an absolute highlight. So I waited a good hour for that eastern yellow robin to come back and it never came back unfortunately, but that's just the way it goes. While I was waiting, a yellow tufted honey had actually landed on the exact perch and we got some really nice shots that, you know, again, I didn't expect to get. And if I hadn't been waiting there, I wouldn't have got those photos. So um, I think today just showed you that you can get nice shots just simply walking around in the bush, you know. I didn't use any sort of calls or food or any setups. I just wandered about and sort of just watched the birds' behavior waited for them to get onto a nice perch or an open area and took some photos. So I'm at a local lake and I'm here for a reason. This monopod, believe it or not, actually has this foot on the bottom which I'm going to use like my ground pod. So I'm going to actually use just the foot of this monopod to shoot some greaves and ducks and whatnot. So how does that actually work? Well, at the bottom here we've got three feet that um, you can come out like so. 
So this is how, you know, the monopod will generally stand like this and it's got a ball head here. Uh, but I don't need this part of the monopod. So I can just simply pull on this red lever and this detaches from this foot and it leaves us with just the foot. All right, so we'll mount my lens onto this little uh, foot and see how it works. Alrighty, so we've got obviously got the quick release plate on the bottom of the lens and I can just pull down on the red here and drop it in there and it's locked into place. Alright, so let me set the scene for you. I'm at a local lake. I've seen an Australian grebe that's breeding. It's built a nest and it's currently building a nest and I believe it might be on eggs out in the lake. So I'm just on the water's edge. This is people walk around here all the time so the birds are not um, fussed by me being here. So I'm just waiting now to try and get a good pose. At the moment the bird's bum is facing towards us which isn't ideal and that's part of it. You know, you just have to wait and be patient and eventually the bird will change position. So I'm here, I'm laying, I'm waiting. Oh, it's up moving the egg which is pretty cool if you can get that behavior would be nice just taking lots of photos Something that probably doesn't come across in some of my videos is how much downtime you have um, and I actually like that, it's a good thing, you know, I'm laying here by the water's edge, I'm actually just waiting for the sun to come down, it could be another half an hour or so before I get that really nice light. I've got shots of the bird I'm happy with but I just want some shots with that golden light so I'm just going to have to lay here and wait but I don't want to be anywhere else to be honest. I'm quite happy just laying here <laughs> even though I'm laying on the ground and it's not all that comfortable, I don't care. Um, I'm just in my element laying here waiting, a bit of anticipation of what sort of shots I'm going to get. Um, yeah, I couldn't be happier. So the birds are just changing over and I'm hoping to get a shot with the two birds in the one frame, that's the goal. And we can see one bird sort of looking at us, so fingers crossed that we can get some shot with two birds, that would be ideal, that would sort of up the behaviour, that's what we're going for. Um, so we've got shots of the bird on its own, but having two birds doing something is ideal. Um, the light now is absolutely sublime, it's beautiful, um, just casting the most beautiful colours on the bird. Um, the water looks nice. Right, the sun's going down and I'm just photographing these black fronted dotrels. Just waiting for them to come to me.
let's start off by just saying I had a lot of fun and I was really happy with the photos that I was able to capture. So the highlight of the outings was just that the monopod exceeded my expectations. The fact that I could shoot both in the bush and at the lake with one piece of equipment shows just how versatile this monopod is. So this model that I have before me is actually the iFootage Cobra 2 C180. A bit of a mouthful, but this one's carbon fiber and it goes to 1.8 meters. Now you can get an aluminum version and you can get a shorter version as well. So just be aware of that. So this carbon fiber version weighs around 1.25 kilos or what is that, 2.75 pounds. So it's very light for what it is and it does fold down into a very small package. So amazingly, it actually extends all the way to 1.8 meters. It can go even higher, meaning even the tallest person will have no issues using this monopod whatsoever. And also impressive is the fact that its maximum load is 10 kg. It can easily take pretty much any camera or lens without an issue whatsoever. Now in regards to price, this carbon fiber version goes for around 194 US and the aluminum version around 154. So I believe that's a fair price for the quality of kit that you're getting. Okay, let's start off with the positives. The first thing is it's just extremely well made. You can tell it's good quality just the minute you put your hands on it. You know, it's extremely smooth in its operation, how it goes up and down. Ball head's good, the foot's good, just everything about it oozes quality. All right, let's start with my favorite feature of this monopod, and it's actually at the bottom of the monopod, and it's this mini tripod with a ball head on it, which allows you to swivel it around. And thankfully, it does actually detach, so I can remove the um, monopod, and that leaves me with this tiny little tripod. And this is absolutely incredible. I believe you can purchase this on its own, but it's extremely sturdy. It's got three feet that you can see, and they're all adjustable, so you can change, you know, you can have it laying flat if you wanted to, um, like so, or bring the feet down into a position that you want. It's very sturdy, and on top of that is this ball head, and it's got a little knob on the side that you can turn. And I've used, as you saw, I used this to put this entire weight on, which is pretty incredible. It can, as I mentioned, 10 kilos. So this foot's gonna have a lot of good purposes in the future, and I'll probably use this probably more than the actual monopod itself. So um, pretty amazing. The other benefit of the monopod is you don't actually have to put another ball head or some sort of gimbal on top to mount your big lens. Obviously, just with that quick release plate, I can just drop it on there, uh, give it a bit of a wiggle, and it's on there. And I can easily adjust the height up and down to suit my style. And because we've got that, um, we've got the ball head on the bottom, it enables us to move it around um, quite easily, you know, all that motion. We don't have to have a ball head here. Uh, the only downside to no ball head here is the angle when you're trying to get high, you have to bend down, which is a little bit awkward, but I mean, you could just quickly raise the height, I suppose, and come back like so um, if you wanted to. So not a major thing, not a major issue, but you know, I didn't really find any issues not having that ball head or gimbal, and that's just one less thing that you need. So having the ball head at the base is kind of genius in my opinion, that's for sure. The other obvious advantage to the monopod is it's just a lot lighter than the big old tripod. So it's, it's only 1.25 kilos, so there's still a bit of weight once we add the lens and the camera, but it's just that little bit lighter than the tripod. And I, find it quite, I found it quite easy just to throw it over my shoulder like so, and then just walk through the bush um, like this. I've only got one leg sticking out instead of three. And when I'm ready to go, it's a lot quicker to use the monopod than it is to use a tripod. So I can just drop it down, make sure I don't hit my head, and then I'm a sort of a way to go. And as I've talked about, the other advantage is just that quick release plate. You know, if I wanted to, let's say that there was a bird in flight and I wanted to quickly take the camera off, it's just a bit easier. I can just pull this off and start shooting and away I go. So, you know, that's a real benefit of this quick release plate. I can just drop it on there and away I go. So I've been talking about a lot of positives, but there are some negatives and I'll mention them to you now. The first one, and probably the most obvious one, is that with these monopods, you can't leave them upright like this and then go and grab a drink or something to eat or do something else. Because if you let it go, it just falls over and there you go, all your lens and camera crashing to the ground. So obviously with a tripod, I can just um, mount it onto the gimbal Lock, lock it into place and there it is and I can go and do whatever I want to do. So, you know, I would have to, if I was in the bush and I needed to grab something or do something, I've actually got to lay it down onto the ground. Not an issue all the time. However, if you've got, say, wet ground, you've got rocks, you introduce the chance of scratching your lens and your camera, you know, and that's not ideal. 
Um, so that is one downside to this monopod. The second disadvantage, I guess, of a monopod is it just doesn't make sense if you're shooting in a blind or a setup where you've got to wait for a bird. You know, when I'm sitting in blinds and waiting and it's just on the tripod head, I can just sort of sit there, relax and wait. However, if I was using a monopod, I'd have to be sitting there holding on to the thing the whole time. It's no good laying it on the ground, waiting for a bird to come, then popping it up and taking the shots. It just wouldn't work. Another downside to the monopod, and it goes for tripods as well, is just the weight of it. You're adding an additional 1.25 kilos to your kit. Now, if you've got a really light kit, like my R5 and 100 to 500, that only weighs around two kilos. So it doesn't make a lot of sense to then add an additional 1.25 kilos to that to wander around in the bush when I can just handhold it quite easily. All right, so who is this monopod for? Well, it's basically for anybody that's got a heavy kit such as this and walks and shoots. So if you're walking around in the bush and you need some form of stabilization, then a monopod makes a lot of sense. It's much easier than lugging around the tripod. So in the future, if I'm just walking around in the bush and I want to take my heavy lens, then I will definitely be using a monopod such as this. And also that foot is pretty awesome next to the lake. However, if you're sitting in a blind or you do setups, sometimes like I do, then of course I'm going to use the tripod because I need to sit there for long periods and I need the tripod to take the weight. And if you're just walking around in the bush with a light kit, then just hand holding is the obvious choice and you don't even need a monopod or a tripod. And I was interested to know what you, my audience, um, use. So I've put up a poll and I was really surprised with the results. As you can see on the screen, over 70% of people actually just handheld and only around 10% of people actually use monopods. And I guess that just shows how far we've come in regards of image stabilization and how light kits are becoming. It's just getting easier and easier to handhold, which is a good thing. So as you can see, 10% of people do use a monopod, and if you're in the market for a monopod or you think it might be handy, I highly encourage you to Google and have a look for this iFootage Cobra 2. I've been extremely impressed with it, and I'm sure if you were to pick up this one, you'd be as impressed as I was. So thanks again to iFootage for sending me this monopod to test. I had a lot of fun doing it. If you enjoyed the video, obviously give me that thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more of these videos. And thanks again to all my lovely members that support the channel. Until the next video, take care and see you later. And then on the shoulder and sort of off I went. So, oh, <laughs> hang on the back of my head. So, you know, I was able to throw it on the back of my uh, shoulder here and just wander around and then put it down. <laughs> If you see a bird on a nice perch, and it's often the key in the bushes, if you see a bird land on a nice perch on its own, <laughs> can't even finish sentence.